we don't understand this. We are normal Americans. And what we don't understand is the political voting habits of four pretty salient groups. I am Mark Stewart Greenstein. I'm actually, my heritage is to one of those groups. And it is so perplexing. Why Jews, Indian Americans, Catholics, and African Americans vote Democrat. In majority, in most cases, in large majority, when there's Democrat pitted against a good Republican and often a very good third party candidate. And yet the Democrats have had your allegiance for far too long. I'm not sure if you understand why you vote that way. It seems like it might be reflexive. It might be steeped into tradition, but it deserves to end or at least be more thoughtfully considered. So let me try. I'll begin in reverse order. I'll go African-Americans first, many of whom still live with a great grandparent who waxes nostalgically about the relative good that Harry Truman and Franklin Delano Roosevelt did for blacks. But that was 70, 80, and 90 years ago. For the last 20 years, a good number of African Americans have woken up. They realize that what modern Democrat leaders do to black families is despicable. Inviting illegal immigrants to displace their jobs, reducing police, which causes far more rapes, murders, domestic violence to black families, urging dependence, yes, dependence on government welfare and creating dependence by not adequately ad educating children in most black schools or in mostly black schools, I should say. Look, the school neglect is especially searing. It's vile. The most hardened white supremacist could not be happier seeing the state of the pitiful school systems fashioned by Democrats. Don't compare any modern Democrat leader to FDR Truman. Joe Biden is closer to Strom Thurmond and, Joe, uh, and George Wallace than to Harry Truman and FDR. Catholics, probably the largest group who should be especially concerned with the Democrat leadership today. Catholic persecution that plagued Europe helped many Catholic families' ancestors get to America. But there's almost nothing that the modern Democrat Party has done to help your faith or help your families flourish. Modern Democrat leaders are repressive. This goes especially to faith where they happily defund Catholic schools, where they restrict Catholic hospitals and force literally at gunpoint in cases, churches to close. Joe Biden is especially repressive, or should I say his handlers, okay? I think Mr. Biden is an easygoing, otherwise nice man but he gets taken advantage of by Democrat party operatives. To gain power, these handlers, they, they quell dissent, and it's working, aided by the Praetorian Guard of the media. Dissenting Americans face shutdowns in speech, they face jail sentences for protecting their property. Many Catholics have a reverence for John F. Kennedy, but Joe Biden, is no John F. Kennedy. In his and his henchmen's repressions, Joe Biden is closer to Joe McCarthy than to JFK. All right, now come the most perplexing group of Democrats, Indian Americans. Indians who've emigrated here in the last 60 years have no JFK, no Harry Truman, no FDR icons in their governing history. So no iconic Democrat leader should be ingrained in them. Many Indians came to the U.S. in the 1990s. They were talented, highly educated. They were welcomed. They had a welcoming president, Bill Clinton, who liked immigration so long as the emigres wanted to work. But now Biden, 
and modern Democrat leaders punish people who work. They expect us to pay for corporate welfare, for lazy college students' welfare with the uh, automatic loan repayments, for lazy immigrants' welfare and irresponsible consumers' welfare. Modern Democrat leaders use the Treasury Department and the IRS to tax, to punish, and to steal your privacy. You and your forebears came here for freedom and success. The Democrat leaders squelch both. In his repressiveness, Joseph Biden is closer to Joseph Goebbels than to Bill Clinton. Joe Biden is also corrupt. And here's where Jews have often been a small group that would in the past have spoken out against corruption. Not anymore. Most Jewish Democrats have bought hook, line, and sinker into the government media complex. Now, with Biden's corruption, here it is personal, and I don't give him a pass, okay? It's not the handlers anymore, because when he had all his marbles as vice president, he was personally profiting at the expense of the American people. So pleasing handlers, eh, it's in play for politics, but personal gain, for that reason, he and the palace guards of media who protect him deserve condemnation. Richard Nixon resigned because of relative to Biden, relatively petty charges of party related criminality. Joe Biden's personal machinations as vice president made him probably the most corrupted now president we've ever had. Richard Nixon's misdeeds pale in comparison. Now, a decent number of Jews, Indians, Catholics, African Americans don't vote Democrat. They are wise. They've woken up. But I urge members of those groups now who want to run for office to run as Democrats. And here's why. We, the normal people, need to invade the Democrat Party's leadership. Democrat voters, they, look, they deserve to have choices. They shouldn't face a solid wall occupied only by status stooges. And of late, those who want to empower themselves and shut down your wealth, your freedoms, your happiness. So I ask diehard Republicans in blue states and purple slate states to actually wear a D label and run for office as Democrats. It's a label. It's not going to change your values. It's not going to make you any less conservative, but it would allow people who think we're, we have horns on our heads to actually see that we are nice people caring about the very values that traditional Democrat voters actually cared about. You'd be running for office where you can do the most good. And at the national level, dividing the Democrat leadership is, in this decade, the greatest good conservatives can realistically offer. I'm Mark Stewart.